At this time, I'm going to bring a very distinguished uh, friend of good causes. I call it uh, an intellectual and a scholar uh, general in Pakistan Army, former chief of MI and ISI, Lieutenant General Asad Durrani. Uh, Durrani sir, welcome to Washington virtually. Thank you very much for asking me over. I think on uh, the subject of Kashmir, during the last so many years, so many decades, so much has been talked about. Uh, if I have to make any useful contribution, I must talk about the part Pakistan played, uh, especially when we went wrong, when we didn't handle the situation well. And that was most of the time. All the events that I'm going to you know, talk about and illuminate individually can be rationalized, but can find well, one reason or the other. But the whole thing, when it is put together, it will bring very clearly to the fore that despite the fact that we used to say it's a jugular, you know, it's a core issue, Kashmir is a jugular way, unfinished agenda of the partition, the fact is, that uh, we did not evolve. We never actually framed uh, a grand a national strategy in which people were involved, and there was a steering mechanism to ensure that uh, this objective that we have set for ourselves in the national purpose, the national aims, that we could follow, it, that we could adjust as for the requirement, but we still keep at it till the aim is achieved. I'm going to go through a couple of events and then uh, try and give you uh, also a reason that I think uh, it happened that right there. We can start with the ceasefire in 1948. In hindsight, it seems that it was probably the right thing to do, but I think from the purity, from the military point of view, from the strategic point of view, it wasn't right. Once you build up a momentum, you keep at it, and not because of some amorphous promise for time to say that you give it up till you can you know, ensure that your position is so strong that you will achieve it. So it may have been accepted in good faith, but uh, strategically, it wasn't uh, the right thing to do. The, right, the next one is about the uh, case that we presented in the United Nations. I think Sardafrullah was brilliant, very well presented. But there was no follow up. After that, we did renew it. Uh, we didn't pursue it relentlessly to achieve our aims. In 1962, I think it was a clear case of Ayub Khan getting cold feet. There was an opportunity for us to do something about Kashmir, but uh, we decided that he was going to be, you know, uh, more into another camp probably under pressure, or again probably misled, led up the garden path by America that uh, if he didn't do anything, something would happen. I don't have to even talk about 65 infiltrators because everyone knows that it's a badly planned. A crude offensive, well, it just so happens that one was part of it. Five or six kilometers were left before he could capture the crucial part of Kashmir. And then again, someone here in Islamabad, in GSU, got cold feet on five or six kilometers just because uh, the Indians had attacked uh, across the international border. We stopped it. We gave you our forces. But that was one very stupid thing to do. Post 71, yes, of course, the situation was bad. We had lost East Pakistan. We were in a bad position. But all those years, no effort was made to create certain assets in Kashmir, which is whenever the need arose, one could do something about it. Uprising in 1990, we got a little surprised. Not prepared for such a thing that I could have understood, but since we have not prepared those assets over the last couple of decades, the fact is that we carried out certain things not because of a well-worked-out plan, 
but almost haphazardly, all the institutions left on their own, no national direction. I must talk about here, yet or right now, that the movement was started by JKL. And there were enough number of reservations there in the corridors of power. Should we let JKLF take the lead because of their pro-independence one? No one at that time, except for a few people, thought that one could use it at that time technically. The other things will come a little later, but at least the resistance could be unified. About Kargal, let's set the matter. I don't think that one even thought through as to would it help the Kashmir cause or the Pakistani cause at all. Because only a few months before that, the two countries had gone nuclear. So at that time, everyone was worried about, you know, the possible crosses of the threshold, not about Kashmir. I think the most pathetic response that we gave was after 370 was uh, you know, uh, revoked by the Indian uh, uh, Indian government on the 5th of June, no, sorry, uh, 5th of August, 2019. Have you ever, as could have, could anyone ever think that we would simply respond by making another map and renaming a road? Not even humanitarian aid was, uh, you know, mobilized. For reasons that one can go and discuss, you know, uh, end this. I think one should talk about the causes, why it happened every time, why those uh, sustained strategy was made, why were we fixated with a particular name and plebs it or nothing, all or nothing, although the strategic thinkers will advise you that you do it incrementally, take whatever you can, and then piecemeal move towards gaining the ultimate objective. But whenever, you know, this independence card or the third option was talked about, instead of thinking that how to now make use of it, because after all, a very really large number of people in Indian health Kashmir were for independence, so getting them on board could have been uh, at least, uh, uh, I think, avoided very, very bad, very foolish statements have been made here at the highest level. People keep reminding me about the new Khan having said once, for the sake of 7 million people, Kashmiris, we are what we do sacrifice 70 million Pakistanis. And this is something that has never made sense to me except for some people who think that you who must think about it, uh, you know, in a mathematical sense. There are causes where even a few people involved would actually turn the tide in your favor. And in any case, in our history, not only in our history, also some other countries, they have pursued their objective relentlessly, even if there are few or very few number of people involved. Pakistan first, of course, I think has always been a very foolish thing like a Marak first. Don't even have to talk about that. But let me say that if the movement is still around, it's still alive, essentially it is because of the struggle of the Kashmirism. So the credit goes to them. And the second, because of some very foolish handling by the Indians, breaking the elections, list because the Muscular policy that they followed, and no one less than Vishwan Sinha, the former foreign minister, has made a statement and said, India has lost cash flow. Territory we can try and retain, but the hearts and minds of the people. Are not. So if that, because of their good policies, because of the unwise thing, because of their so-called muscular thing, if they have not won the hearts and minds of the Kashmiris, if it's only the territory they are keeping, then I suppose there is still not only hope, but there is a good chance that because of their struggle and because of the Indian policies, this cause can be pursued further. Thank you very much.